Hey everybody, I'm Chris and this is my channel Chesapeake Chris. Thanks for stopping by. I wanted a cart for when I fished out the outer banks at the beach and for when I fished the piers here on the island because it's about a 300 foot walk to get out to the end of the pier. So I wanted a cart to put all my fishing stuff in so I could just drag it behind me. I know they make them. I've seen a lot of them for sale online. Most of, most of the decent ones cost $100 or more. And I know there's a whole bunch of YouTube videos out there that shows you how to make them. Most people make them out of PVC. But I had a little bit of an issue on making one out of PVC, a reason I didn't want to do it. And I'll show you why and I'll explain it right now. So if you want to see my homemade beach slash pier cart, please stick around. So we go to the Outer Banks usually at least once a year, and I always fish when I'm down there. But we have one of these totes, these cheap totes that we call our Outer Banks box. And it has a lot of stuff in it that we always want to take, like some toilet paper, paper towels, paper plates, some dishcloths, some dish towels. It's just some stuff that you know you may need and it may not be there right when you get there. Well, when we pack the Jeep up, my wife's Jeep Cherokee for the Outer Banks, it's pretty full. Uh, there's not much room for anything else so i didn't know if i'd have room for a cart so i thought hey if i could get some sort of a fishing cart that this outer banks tote would fit right inside well then it would take up hardly any extra room in the jeep so that's what i did so here's the cart i made you can see it's made out of a tote and it's going to be the same size as the outer banks tote i fashioned a handle on it with pvc I put some cut PVC pieces on the back for rod holders. I got some cheap tires off uh, Harbor Freight. They were on sale when I got them. They were only like $6.99 a piece. And I put all this together, and it seems to work out pretty good. But let me show you some of the specifics on how I made it. So the thing about these totes are they're pretty flimsy, especially the bottom. So the first thing I want to do is shore up the bottom. Well, I already had a piece of thin wood so i took and i smeared really good silicone all over it and i attached that to the bottom and then i had an old cutting board from amazon you can get these quarter inch cutting boards really cheap off amazon that probably would have worked good on the bottom too but so i siliconed that one in on the inside and then i drilled holes and i put about six bolts all the way through the cutting board the plastic tote and the wood so that gave me a good sturdy bottom, gave me something to attach my shaft to. My handle too. So that worked out pretty good. Now the thing with this, if I want it to fit in the vehicle and not take up additional room, I needed the handle, the wheels, and the rod holders to come off of it. Then I can set the Outer Banks tote inside of it, and I can just stash them somewhere else in the truck. They're pretty small items. So I made everything so it would detach. What I did for the wheels is I got the wheels on there, and then I just used one of them hairpin cotter pins or whatever. Drilled a hole through the shaft. I had to put a, I just cut a piece of PVC and put it on there for a spacer bushing so that the pin didn't get caught on the valve stem. So all you gotta do is pull that pin, slip this wheel off, put the pin back in, do the same thing for the other side. Now, for the handle, down there, that joint is not glued. I used one of those latch pins that I use all the time on my stuff that I build. So you just pull this latch pin out, and then I had to put another kind of reinforcement piece on it there, which is just a bent piece of quarter inch all thread. Well, I put this on there with a wing nut. So if you take this wing nut off, like so, you can actually pull this handle out. Then you can pivot this to the side. I can pull that latch pin out and that whole handle comes out. And all I got is a piece of PVC stubbed about right there. And then I made where the rod holder would come out and I had to fabricate my own rod holder. 
but I basically just bought some aluminum straight piece and some little aluminum angle and I already had a bunch of PVC laying around so this rod holder like I said I basically made a frame and I just bought some of these angles pieces that you use if you're gonna attach like two pieces of wood together and I bent them over so that it'll hang over the side I put a couple pieces of this aluminum angle coming down this way I put a piece of the straight across the bottom a piece of straight across the top and then I bought some of them straps from the hardware store they're just like straight straps about half inch wide that have holes already in them that you can you know put wood together or whatever so I basically just pop riveted and bolted those straps onto those bent angles and then I attached my quarter inch aluminum angle put those two cross pieces together and you can see what I'm left with that thing lifts right off and then when you want to put it back on you just come over here and you literally can drop it right back on there just that simple so if I take the wheels off the rod holder off and the handle off then that other tote will fit right inside of it so with the wheels off the rod holder off and once I take the handle off I just take our outer banks tote and I drop it right down in there and you can see it sits right down in there the wheels won't be on there the shaft sticks out just a little bit the handle won't be on there so I think I can haul it it won't take up hardly any extra room I'll just stash the rod holder somewhere the handle and the wheels in the Jeep so let me give you a couple quick little pointers in case you decide to try and do this that may save you some headaches they're 5 8 inch bearings on those harbor freight wheels so you can get a piece of steel stock like this that's 5 8 then i knew i had to drill through this to put those pins in to hold the wheels on so i mean i got a drill press and stuff but it just seemed like it would be a pain so what i did i bought some of this half inch aluminum hollow tubing and a piece of dowel rod half inch dowel rod that would fit right down inside it pretty tight just to give it a little bit more strength and rigidity well this is only half inch od and like say the bearings are 5 8 well we have this we had an old set of wind chimes with these like brass chimes hanging down that broke a long time ago and i don't throw anything out i'm a hoarder my my garage looks like m5 from mythbusters because i keep everything well that aluminum tubing slides right inside those brass wind chime pieces and then this is about 5 8 and it'll slide right in the bearings on those wheels but another thing i want to mention is if you want to use the solid steel rod if you have some half inch c pvc for doing water lines for houses not the schedule 40 half inch pvc as you can see there's a big difference between the diameters of these two but if you have this c pvc a half inch rod will slide right in there just like that pretty decent and then you can slide this thing through those bearings because it's pretty much the exact same diameter as these brass things it's about 5 8 inches diameter on the outside so if you want to use a steel shaft it's harder to drill through but you can actually get a half inch shaft or you can get a 5 8 and if you get the half inch you can use this c pvc now to make the rod holder i just bought some the angle i bought is actually quarter by half bought some aluminum angle and that's what i ran down the sides to make the side pieces so that it'd be good and strong it wouldn't flex and then the two pieces going across the top and bottom i just bought like i say some aluminum bar stock i think this is three quarter inch maybe i don't know and this this may actually be half by three quarter i can't really remember but it's it's rigid enough that when you put it on there it doesn't want to bend easily and this is strong enough for putting just like eight to ten inch pieces across there so that it will keep everything square and it won't deform on you so there it is loaded up i got my i got three rods on it i got my outer banks box that's that one right here on the left in there and then just for the heck of it that's the little soft tackle box i take when i fish ponds and stuff i put both of them in there there's still room to put more stuff on top down the sides but uh what i had to do my 12 foot that rod there is my 12 foot beef stick the handle is so long it would drag on the ground so on that one i didn't realize that until i got it done i just bought a coupling 
cut another piece of inch and a half PVC. This is all inch and a half PVC. I cut a short piece. I put a coupling on there and I put a cap in there and I drilled holes in the bottom of the cap. So if it rains or any water gets in there, it'll drain out. So now that one doesn't go all the way through so it won't drag, but you can see the reels. Now my other rods, the handles are short enough where I didn't need anything on the bottom. The reel will catch on the top and I put couplings on the top too, just so it's not so rough, so it's smoother and it looks better. But there's everything in there. I will tell you one thing, if you got those three rods, that's a nine footer, a 12 footer and a six footer. If you got them hanging off the back like that and you take everything out, this thing will tip back. So you need to take your rods out first, especially if you got some 12 and nine and 10 foot rods in there. So now I'm, I didn't have a, I don't have sand here to test it in. And you know, I didn't want to have a dump truck, pay to have a dump truck, bring a whole bunch of sand in my yard. So I'm just going to test it out by wheeling it around through the yard to see how it does. And we'll see how it, see how this thing works. So let's take a quick spin through the yard. It's looking like it's getting ready to rain. It rained earlier. So let me see how this works out. Okay, my grass isn't that tall because I just cut it not too long ago, but it's pretty bumpy out there and there's some grass and it worked really good. Um, it turns really good on corners. It was easy to pull and that's how I'm going to have it loaded at the beach. Probably won't go quite as good at the beach in the sand. The tires come all different sizes too. Those are only 10 inch tires. If you want to spend more money, you can get 13 inch tires. Um, I say I bought them because there's only like $6.99 a piece and I'm not going to be going through soft sand that much. A lot of the sand I'm going to be at is not going to be that deep and soft. It's going to be the more harder wet sand. So the test went well. That's it. I'm going to pack everything up before the rain comes. There's the cart. I showed you how the handle comes off. The tires come off and the rod holder comes right out. I can drop the outer banks tote right inside of it. I'll just throw those pieces in somewhere. I did put the little kickstand on it or whatever. So when you set it down, and I put a T on it for my handle. I don't know. That's just what I wanted to do. So there you go. If you want to try and do one of these, that's the kind of thing you need. Now, if you don't want it, the wheels and stuff to come off easily, this is very easy to make. Just remember to reinforce the bottom. Quarter inch white plastic cutting boards work great. Run bolt, put one in the top, one in the bottom, put some silicone on them, drill holes, run bolts all the way through, tighten them down. That really firms up the bottom. So, I hope you all liked this video. If you did like my video, please give me a thumbs up like. Share the video. Think about hitting the subscribe button if you really like my channel. And if you do, don't forget to hit the notification bell so you get notified when I put a new video out. Thanks for watching. Make as many comments as you like. I reply to all comments. And I'll see you on the next video.